All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are playing some Stormworks. Uh, let's see, and what we are doing today is I am going to attempt to connect the remote control to the crane. I'm gonna attempt. I'm gonna make an attempt. I'm gonna make an attempt. Uh, so what do we need here? We need, uh, I think it's composite right, and we're going to need five channels. And let's see. Turn that to input, I think. Yeah. So right now I'm just attempting to set up the microcontroller. Uh, let's see, let's set this to channel five. And then what I want to do is change this number to output. All right, and this is going to be our broadcasting channel. Let's see if I got that right. There's the send frequency, and then we need, here, we'll do that, and we'll need transmit mode, and then I just have a red light here. Hold on, what are we doing here? Let's see, signal strength. No, I think I did that wrong. Oh, yeah, I guess I don't need the keypad. If I'm going to be setting it up on channel 5, I don't need this keypad here. All right. All right, big microcontroller. Probably doesn't need to be this big, but we're going to use it for some other stuff. So we have our composite. Update that. That's going to go out to our little radio thingy. <laughs> Input for composite data to send. I think that's right. Yes, and it's going to detect these. So we'll set up channel one. Uh, this will have to be output, I'm pretty sure. So this can't be composite right. This has to be composite. Was it read maybe? All right, let's see if that, let's see if that's gonna work. Input on channel one. All right, so we'll update that, and then. No, it's got to be output. It's got to be output. It's got to be output. So this has to change. Let's see here. And that means... Let's go back into it here. 
trying to see if I have this set up right. Composite read on off, and it's going to read on remote channel one. And what that channel one is going to do for now, I'm going to attempt to turn on these magnets. Now, I've never set up a remote before. So I'm just kind of learning as I go with this. Uh, and then we'll need to send the composite somewhere. So this is data to receive. I think that's what we want. All right, let's see if that works. And it's set to channel 5. So the remote control is basically a seat, more or less vehicle seat that you just hold in your hand. Let's see if I can get on the ship here. So we can pick it up. We'll turn this on. That means we're broadcasting. And then if we press a B, oh, it's R. Channel 5. And then if I press 1, No, that, did, that didn't work. Oh, I need to be turn it on. Oh, I better make sure I set that up right. All right, let's see what's going on. I got this broadcasting on the right channel five. And that will send to here, which is the frequency. And that tells it to transmit, and it's transmitting. Composite data output for received composite data. Input for composite data to send. I think we want this one. We want to receive the composite data from the remote and then we want to use that oh you know what I'm probably gonna need is uh, I might I don't know if I need a toggle for that let's see oh I can hear faint Tsunami warning in the distance. Oops. All right, so if I go to channel five, yeah, I don't see the magnets turning on. So See what's going on here. Uh, I don't think we need this. 
Let's see here. Sort this out. This should be. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But it's this composite read. Read channel. Yeah, that should be right. channel oh maybe I need to set this to channel 5 let's try that See what's going on here. It's probably the way I've got the microcontroller set up. <laughs> I mean, there's not much to it, really. Hmm. Unless. remote channel one this will be a connector right should be channel one cops read on off yeah should be channel so what we can do is uh, we can update that. Let's just check to see if there's still power. Still power. And these are all connected to there. And this is our transmit. That's our frequency, which tells us which channel we want it to be. It could be this one here. No, we don't want to be sending. We want it to be receiving composite data should be that simple really unless I can change this to channel 1 
no, it's not. <laughs> it's not doing anything. Oh, that's not good. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's strange how uh, I tell it to transmit and uh, oh, I should have done that. Whoops. Now I'm going to have the remote, a remote stuck to me. Oh, well. Oh, so it must be the default setting must be on. Gotcha. The default setting must be on. I wonder if there's a way to change that. Nope. All right, well, that makes it easy. The default setting is on. All right, well, now that we know that works, uh, now what I need to do is add some additional nodes. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. And they're going to be outputs. Oh, I'll need four, actually. All right, and this one is going to be crane down. Don't spill my coffee. Uh, and this one will be crane up. And this one will be crane out. And this will be crane in. All right, let's update that. And let's, what is this, crane out? All right, I guess we'll work on the base, the base first. Now, I think, I think out was down. Let's try, we'll try. All right. It's best just to do this, I think, one at a time, and that way I don't get confused here. Uh, let's see, crane in, crane out, crane up crane down. So we're doing crane out right now. So we need another composite read. All right, and this will be number two. And we could change this channel. That's channel one right now, but I could change that. So let's test it out. Number two. Yeah, I see the remote turns it on. Number two, that must be in. That must be in. Now, with the remote, we can, I could set it up so this entire boat, I don't know if I could do that, but most of the controls on the boat could be s controlled with the remote. Right? That's pretty cool. Okay, so then let's change crane out from down. Seems I have the remote on me. I don't have to. Uh... Oh, here it comes. No. These waves. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's try that again before we were interrupted by the wave. Let's 
spawn that. Yeah, there we go. All right. It's already a toggle button on the uh, the remote control, so I don't need to add the toggle button in here. Otherwise, it will be a, a dual toggle. Crane in, then we'll say crane up and crane down. So crane in will be three. to remember all, all this Let's see crane in all right now we need to test the up and down let's just see if it's uh, positive is down Whatever that's supposed to mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, I imagine crane up is probably going to be down. Let's try that. And that should be... Make sure it's connected here. Crane down is going to be number five. Turn the magnets on. I'm going to press 5. Okay. So that is crane up, and this one is crane down. Crane down is up. Right, and that'll be on channel four. All right, well, let's save this. Then what I'll do is I'll install a remote control inside the sub as well. So you just have to pick up the remote that's how these remotes work. You just have to pick them up. Oh, now we're broadcasting. Let's see. Oh, that's not working. Something's going on. help if I uh, finish connecting these up, right? So we can test it. All right, there we go. Now everything's connected. Should be able to fully test this from the shore. All right, oh yeah, see as soon as you connect to it, the magnets turn on. Perfect. Now, what's not working is. Oh, yeah, there we go. And I'm doing all this from the remote. Ah, how cool is that? Oh, yeah, see, it slides automatically. If you notice that, it slides. I'm not doing anything. And it slides. This is this. I. Yeah.
Yeah, I made a mention of this on the uh, forums about that, right? Because it's like, well, when there's an input of zero, it's not supposed to move. So there's an input of zero, and it's moving. So I asked them if they could give us like a, a break or something on this. Or not. They just said it's the way I make my builds was my, the response. So I said, well, what do you mean? There, right? That's in, and now f it's been turned off. Yeah, and it's still moving, right? So anyways, it is what it is. Cool. Well, I'm happy that works. And then if I want it to go down, I just have to press 5, I think it is. Yeah, cool. Very, very cool. That makes me happy. Right, and see, as soon as you disconnect like that, disconnect the remote. And that is because I don't know why it automatically could be because it's the same as the broadcast number. That I'm not sure. Anyways, all right, cool. Update. Yeah, so now what I need to do is I need to go into the sub. And we can just add a remote right here. All right, and now when I'm in the ocean, in the submarine, I just need to pick up the remote control and I can I can move the crane in and out. I can do all that while in in the sub. Neat. Very neat. All right, so just a couple more things that need to be addressed. Uh, let's see here. Need to have a funnel. Hoping that's going to be. I'll have to test that out. Let's see here. Put one on this side too. I guess I could run it off. I could just connect it to here. Just testing the coal. My ability to transfer coal or uranium, whatever, from here, right? So if we set coal level on and we turn that to coal on, and that means I have to set all these up. Alright, so what we'll be able to do is be able to test this thing. And once I'm done testing it, then I'm going to have to do some fuel trading to make some money so I can fill this thing right up with fuel. And we'll have to go back to the mine 
get the uranium, and we'll have to take this ship all the way to the Arctic. That's going to be exciting. It's going to be very expensive and very exciting. All right, so this one's set up for coal. And, of course, what I'll need to do is I'll need to have a button here which will allow this hopper to empty into the lower hoppers. But for now, we're just going to be testing that. Let's save it. Spawn it, and we'll just see if I can, if it's close enough for me to empty the coal from one hopper into the next. Maybe I didn't hook up the hopper. Right, the other thing is clearances. Uh, so what I mean by that is all this, these parts that move, I'm going to have to make sure that they don't they don't collide with the ship. So what I might end up having to do is actually carve out a space here, which will allow this free movement up and down. Um, because you'll notice that if you're on very long trips, these things will move up and down. And if they come in contact with the ship, they'll just explode. Just seems to be the way it is. That's why I like, uh, I've built a, a few cranes and I've had some real big accidents with the cranes on the ships. So now I try, I try my best to not make, uh, you know, I try to make fi fixed cranes like this. They don't really make sense, but they make sense in, in, uh, oh yeah, there we go. See? Nice. And that's exactly what the uranium is going to do. So I'll have to have a hazmat suit on, <laughs> All that stuff. But this is going to be exciting. Perfect. Perfect. The alignment is good. Yeah, the alignment is good. All right, so let's set all these up for uranium. I mean, now there's, I don't even know if this is going to work, to be honest, because there's, you can't store the uranium. Or it has to be turned into, this might not even work. Right, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to fly, do a flyover of the Arctic, see if we could find the, uh, the island where we need to take the uranium to. I might need one more vehicle on here. I might need a truck. dump truck or something. Or, or, probably, yeah, I'll probably have to have the container on here, and then when we get to the Arctic, what I'll need to do is spawn a helicopter. fly over here with the helicopter. Yeah, that's what I'll have to do. And connect to a bin, connect the helicopter to a bin, which is going to have the uranium in it. So this will work for now. This will work for testing purposes, but that's the other, that'll be the last 
thing that I need to take care of is, is that because I, I was just surprised that you can't store the uranium ore. You can only store the ingots, which, I don't know, to me kind of didn't make any sense, right? So, Because when you think about it, if I despawn the ship, everything here disappears. So if I had a sea can on here, let's say, and I came over with a truck or a helicopter and I picked up that sea can and I despawned the ship, the sea can would disappear. So I would need to have a helicopter or a truck that could come here and offload from the ship to that vehicle as a separate vehicle, right? And then I could despawn the... Uh, so I might still need a crane. That might be the way to do it, actually. Is uh, off to transfer all these bins. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's kind of, kind of one of those things. So you're in career mode, and the waves come in at random times, and all that kind of stuff, right? So you're contending with all those, all those hazards. So I couldn't just dock the ship and load it. I have to unload it all at one time and then despawn the ship. If I leave it in dock and I drive away, chances are a rogue wave is going to come in and the ship will probably collide somewhere and explode and I'll lose everything. So it's a big risk, right? Yeah, there's a lot of things to consider and I just, one of my, one of my pet peeves with <laughs> Stormworks are those things, right? You know, I mean, it's meant to be challenging and all that kind of stuff. And you have to obviously be creative to try and overcome those challenges. Um, I just, I don't know, for me, it's just kind of, it seems to be a bit much. There's a lot to consider, a lot to consider. Yeah, so I'll have to, that'll be the next thing. Um, essentially, I'll have to have another crane on here, which is going to have to have one of these hoppers on it. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll build a door here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll build a door and I'll have a crane here maybe or a crane on that side or a crane that just goes up over top or something. It'll have to clear that. That's no big deal. We, I can use ropes. Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. And I'll have to empty these hoppers maybe down here. I'll have to have another hopper down here somewhere. And it'll have to slide from here to the rear of the ship, the loading door will open up and then I'll have a crane that'll be able to pick up that hopper, hopefully somehow, and then I'll have to be able to extend, right, lift up the hopper, rotate over to the dock, extend over the dock, and then uh, where I'll have a truck, a truck with a couple of these bins on it, right? So there's still there's still a few things still a few things that need to be worked out here before we can complete the complete uranium. Now it'll be worth it. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll be worth it. I think it will. I think it will be worth the effort. Yeah, because once I've determined that this works, and we get the like the whole idea is to not be. Uh, reliant on oil diesel for the diesel for the ships it's just so expensive right like I had what almost two million dollars <laughs> and I've pretty much spent all of it just on fuel so I'm getting I'm getting I don't even have enough money to fill this ship up if I wanted to to get it to, to the Arctic now so I'll have to do some more fuel trading in that 
yeah, anyways, that's those are the challenges uh, next. Those are the next challenges. I'll need a truck on top of all this equipment to try and transport the uh, uranium. So yeah, this is just kind of a quick middle of the night video. I just wanted to see if I could get the remote control hooked up. I did. It seemed a little confusing at first, but now that I've done it, it's not much to it really. Just making sure that uh, you're broadcasting on the right frequency, and if you're broadcasting on the right frequency, then it works just like a seat have numbers in there and uh, all that stuff right for input well, we shouldn't go to space I shouldn't go to space with this one I don't know if I'll leave this upper part white. Maybe I will. Oops. I'll do this for the floor at least. Have something. Yeah, see, I had to widen it, so I had to move these. Um, the other thing, too, that I've noticed with, with the changes... When you're running the engine now, in the past I was just using a uh, a toggle or a throttle, I guess, and you can't really use a throttle anymore now because the engine will overheat. So you have to be more. You really got to dial in the engines now. You have to be far more specific about the throttle number that you're choosing. It seems like the large engines. Uh, anything at 79, anything above 79, and you're pushing too much RPS, it'll just cause the engines to just instantly overheat. So I've tested. Um, so if you do 78, now the problem with that is that you're restricted. At 78, our RPS is 16 or 17. So that means our top speed which we could probably push a little bit with, with the jets, but our top speed is uh, 8 meters per second, or, I mean, it's still pretty fast. It's about 16, 15, 16 knots, which, I mean, okay, when you think about it, for a ship this big, it's probably pretty fast. You know, container ships, yeah, they do about 25 knots, full tilt, right? So, but any of these, any of these um, support ships... I guess that's what you want to call them when there are any of these tow ships and that kind of stuff they don't actually you know they cruise but they do about 12 13 knots on average I'm sure they can go faster than that when they push their engines but on average that's about where they're where they're at so it's considerably less uh, considerably slower speed than what we were able to get before. Before I was able to get 16 um, RPS out of it, and now <laughs> we're capped at 8, which is alright, but I hope they fix it. And I haven't tested the, the, like the ambient temperature, how that affects the engines. Uh, I know they changed heat, like I say, before, you know, if it was... 40 degree increase in the weather, it would, but I don't think that's that's the way it is anymore. So I'm just kind of rambling now, <laughs> just sort of randomly rambling.
Yeah, so that's that. Got the engine connected. We've got the propellers connected. At this point in time, it's this ship is pretty much ready to go. I think I could. Well, we should do a test here. I could just fire up the engines, and we could do a little test. So the other thing you noticed there uh, earlier, when I was hooking up the ropes, the ship started to list. Now, I don't know. I. Ever since we got that rope update, I haven't really been too impressed with it. <laughs> Me, that's my personal opinion. You know. Um, I'll say I haven't really been impressed with it just because they gave us the rope update. Uh, but you know, I think hoses and stuff could have a similar, kind of have a similar update. But yeah, so if I pull up the ropes and I tie down this anchor, the ship will start to list this way. The silly things, right? The silly things. Now, if I drew, if I drew those anchors on, it, the ship would list the way it does, right? So, I don't know. I'm not too concerned, I guess. But I think when this vehicle is in transit, the best thing to do is to connect the connectors. Probably the best thing. Connect the connectors. The magnets don't do anything. Um, I had this thing on the ocean floor with all the magnets on, and I had the these my anchors down, and a tsunami came in and it wiped me out off the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> so I'm just convinced that magnets are uh, they're like if you want two parts to sort of stick together, they work for that. Other than that, they're not really not really good for much else. So I used to have, you know, like you saw on the other ships, I had magnets here that would sort of hold it down. That was pretty good. But I like to see the ropes, too. The ropes are kind of fun. So that's what we got to do now. we got to put some magnets on here. Oh, let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, and these are good. This will this will help hold the the ship, the submarine onto the ship. You know, if it gets super crazy and super wavy, we need the magnets and we need to tie down the ship. We need we need both, really. So, like, if if I go to the Arctic, for example, I'm going to need to have the magnets. Plus, I'm going to need to have the uh, the tie downs. It's just good practice to have all that sort of all that stuff sorted out. Yeah, because like I say, things move things move around. Well, uh, like I say, I had my first big ship. Um, I had a big crane in the middle of it. I was traveling around and all of a sudden the crane flipped over and destroyed the front of the ship and I sunk. <laughs> so, all right, so then what we'll do is we'll have a button here to release the, so we'll turn that off and we'll take a toggle button here. I guess eventually what I'm gonna do is do we still, do we still need this? We don't need this, huh? We'll get rid of that. The battery I'm going to have to move. Maybe what I'll do is, is I'll have like a little... I don't know if I can build that right now. But. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's late at night. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm drinking a coffee. Uh, maybe I'll make a little room there 
which is where all the equipment will be stored inside the little room, inside some compartments. That kind of stuff. That's what I was getting at. Which is the other the other fun part that we need st I still need to do with this ship, right? It's still in the early early stages. It's got paint on, a little bit of paint on, which is good, but there's still quite a bit to do. We need to put the screens on and get some rooms in here. We'll add a kitchen. Same what we got in the uh, submarine there. We'll add a kitchen and, or a galley, I guess they call it, and uh, some sleeping rooms. I'll sort out this, whatever I got here, these, the stairwell, right? Probably just have one central stairwell which will come all the way down to the basement, which is probably sufficient here. And then I need to do some, once we get the uranium, I'll need to do some testing and stuff. So, yeah. Cool, it's coming along. And this was this ship here was just another, just off the top of my head. That's why, like, this is a bit wide. It probably real ships probably wouldn't be that wide or whatever, you know. But I like it, and it wasn't wide enough. Right before we had it down to one, and I took it out, and I was hitting the waves, and it was listing. And then when I tried to unload the submarine, it actually tipped over onto its side. So I was like, okay, you know what? I I need to make this ship a little bit wider. Um, I wish they'd give us a tad more room on the length, you know. Just so the ship doesn't seem so, like, I guess short and fat. But, you know, that's the way it is, right? And if you're having issues where your ship is really listing from side to side, uh, chances are it's, it's not wide enough for the sea. So, yeah. And then I changed, I did some testing with the radiators. You need four. You need a minimum of four radiators per large engine. I know in the submarine I've got a crazy, crazy amount. I probably don't need, after all the testing that I've done, uh, I, I could probably eliminate, yeah, what do we got here? I could eliminate a few of these and just keep one run. I could probably just keep one run. Uh, I'm not going to because I think it's cool. You know, you come down here in the engine room, it looks, it's all bulky and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, but yeah, so it'll still overheat if you run the engine too hot. And we'll go over that when, uh, when we're traveling here. But, but you don't need the crazy amount of, of radiators that I thought, I thought I needed. You just have to turn the idle down, right? That's the thing, you have to dial in the idle speed between one and one and a half, whatever it is for these large engines, so. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess, the, see I'm down to 300,000, right? So if I start adding, if I start adding too much electrical to this, I'm gonna run out of money. So what I need to do now is, is trade some fuel. So let's see, we'll save this one. And I had a tanker I was working on. Let's see here. This one here. I modified it so it was a lot deeper. I haven't finished. But I modified all these containers, right? But now I don't know, like with the way. What I need to test is. Uh, here, I'll spawn this in. What I need to test is I haven't used the, the fluid connector on the gantry. So I'm wondering if that might be a bit faster than trying to use the pumps. Oh, am I? I've lost all my magnets. <laughs> or they're not connected. Whatever. Yeah. So there, you can, you, you can, let's see, similar to the way that I dialed in the remote control for the crane, you can set up the remote control so that way it works on the fuel gantries as well. 
Um, yeah, so that's going to be something I'll be I'll be testing out here in the near future is trying to get this vessel going because it obviously has the capacity to carry lots of fuel. Yeah, just seawater for now. Oh, it's massive. This thing is massive. Now I'm going to get rid of all these uh, all this stuff. Right, because we had one converted for oil. Oh yeah, these they were just from the sea. So yeah, there's some patching to do on this one. And I'll obviously I'll have to I don't know if there's engines in here anymore. <laughs> I don't think so. This was the old engine room. Oh yeah, it's still got the four engines, so yeah, probably gonna put them down here in the basement. And this was the old uh, our compartments, right? This room here. Yeah. So thanks for watching. I won't save that. I'm going to load this one again. Load this up here. Our subcarrier. This is our current project. But I'm running out of money. So, you know, this ship here too, I could, I could delete that temporarily and I could fill this thing up with diesel. It carries 600,000 units and I might just trade fuel with this thing too. You know, there's so many different ways. We'll take a mini tanker maybe. Uh, but I did want to check. I'm going to save this. I did want to check if I had uh, rail yet. No. 30 for trains. So that's the other thing for trains is maybe that's what I'll do. Run submissions and unlock trains. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, well I just wanted to provide the update there and I just wanted to show uh, how to connect the remote. So we can just go over that. So what we did is we created a microcontroller. Alright, and then in the microcontroller, we'll take a look at it here. We needed composite in and on off out and the number out. And then what I did was our number out, I put a constant number in which we can change to any number. This is our frequency. So when the remote control is turned to this frequency, it can interact with this microcontroller. All right, and then what we did is we connected the frequency input to here, all right? And then we connected the composite to there so it can read the composite. Now I will say that if you want to connect, let's say we sailed over to the uh, refinery and we were getting, we wanted to put oil or we wanted to buy diesel to fuel up the ship. So what you can do is you can put a keypad in here and you can connect that keypad to another one of these uh, antennas and you can connect the two antennas together and you can dial in the keypad so you can talk to the gantry at the, wherever we are. So you can pick up the remote control, you can have the gantry go left and right, and you can have the fuel gantry, uh, the winch, come up and down. So that's something I want to test. I'll test, be testing here, and maybe I'll make a short video about it, um, just to see if we can get faster fuel transfer, if we use the coupling that comes with the gantry versus uh, the hoses in the pumps, right? So, but yeah, anyways, that's so that's what we did. We Connected the remote, connected the remote to the antennas, and we connected the antennas to the microcontroller, which is where we entered in our controls. Now, we don't need to use the push to toggle because the remote control is like a basic seat. And if you look at the logic on the basic seat, 
we see that these are already, the hotkeys are already toggle buttons, right? Now you can change that to push or you can change that to toggle, but by default, they're toggle buttons. So we don't need to add that feature into the microcontroller like we need to do with the touch screens, for example, right? The touch screens aren't a toggle button. They're just a push button. So yeah, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.